you might be a Calvinist. What's up guys, I was here with another video and today we are going to be discussing the five points of Calvinism to see if it's biblical or if it is heretical. Now for a full disclaimer, if you are a Calvinist, that does not mean that you are going to hell. Just like if you hold to an Arminian point of view, that does not mean that you're going to hell. Also, this video is not about John Calvin's life or his personal beliefs, but we're only going to be discussing the five points. Calvinism has five points that spell the acronym TULIP. We are going to go through each point, giving its definition, using the scriptures that support that point, and explaining what it means if we disagree with that point. So let's get started. T stands for total depravity. Now, basically what that means is that the whole world is affected by Adam's sin. Therefore, man needs a savior because he cannot save himself. To disagree is to say that man doesn't need a savior, his heart isn't wicked by nature, and man can do good without God. So let's go ahead and read some supporting scripture. Let's start with Genesis 6 and 5. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. And Jeremiah 17 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And finally, Romans 3 10 through 18 says, As it is written, There is none righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are deceitful, full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Use for unconditional election. Now, if we believe that man is by nature sinful and cannot save himself, God, by his grace in eternity past, has selected those who he chose since man is unable to save himself based on his sinful nature. Now, if you disagree, then you're basically saying that God has not elected who he has saved and he is observing their lives in real time and don't ultimately know who's going to heaven until the day of judgment. So let's read Romans 8, 29 and 30. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now let's look at some verses in Ephesians. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us and the one he loves. Else for limited atonement. Since God has elected a certain group of people he has saved for himself, therefore salvation is only limited to those selected whom Christ has died for. To disagree is saying that Jesus' blood was atonement for all mankind whether they've believed in Christ or whether they've not. And those who have rejected Christ are now with and will be with him in his new kingdom. Matthew 121 says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. John 10 27 states, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, 
is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. And then we jump to chapter 17 and verse 9. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Now Acts 20 and 28 states, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Eyes for Irresistible Grace Those who God elected are drawn to him through irresistible grace, since man is unable by his own will to come to God. Those called by God will respond solely because he has called them. Now, disagreeing is saying no matter how hard God tries, he cannot call a person to grace if they don't want to be called. John 6 and 37 states, All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And let's jump down to verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. Now let's go back to chapter 10, verse 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Peace for perseverance of the saints. Those who God has called through the Holy Spirit will persevere through the faith and will not fall away. The Holy Spirit will continue to work through them and will allow them to remain faithful to God and his word. Now, once again, if you disagree, you're saying even though God has called a person through grace, that person still can choose whether or not if they want to persevere in his will. I know a lot of people have a problem with Calvinism because some has turned into some cultural movement. But me, on the other hand, I don't consider myself a Calvinist, but I do agree with the five points being biblical. My reason is that it reminds me that the Lord is in total control, not us. He calls who he wants and he rejects who he wants. If our actions can sway God in any way to make the decisions that he's had concerning our salvation, then he wouldn't be God. That would make us God. We're not called to understand why God has called some and why he's rejected others. We're called to spread the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that calls and keeps us, not our efforts. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys believe that Calvinism is heretical, even though I've just explained it? Or do you guys basically say that, hey, you know, it's really nothing heretical about it. It does seem like that it aligns with scripture. Now, again, full disclaimer, it doesn't matter if you call yourself a Calvinist or if you don't believe in Calvinism or what, this is a secondary issue. You know, some of us, we're going to agree. Some of us are going to disagree on this topic. But as long as we continue to keep reading our Bibles and studying, we're all going to be able to come to the truth, the ultimate truth. And as long as we can agree that Christ is the sacrifice that atoned for our sins, then I think that we can still come together in fellowship as brothers and sisters in the faith. But anyway, whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, like, rate, share, comment, subscribe, and you guys have a blessed day.